Um, somebody, one of our, our people reposted one of the pictures of uh, the things guys put about that they share um, as having being the winner, uh, winning uh, uh, photo booth for the day. So it was, uh, it's good It's good to know those have been noted around the world, which is really great. So those guys did an excellent job, and thank you for all their hard work. Okay. Um, at the end, actually, it's available right now. Hopefully, I believe it should all be available. Um, we really like you guys to fill out our event evaluation. Uh, hopefully, you've also been filling out the evaluations for the sessions and the feedback for your presenters. All of that is within the, the app. Or if you want to go to the URL there, there's a simple Google form. The link is found under the event evaluation uh, section of our app, or you can just go straight to that. I believe we still also email it out to you as well, um, but you'll have all that uh, a chance to give us some feedback overall on the event and how you can do it all then. Okay, uh, we do take that very seriously. Um, if, you, if you went to a session and it was great, please give them a shout out in the form and ask you what sessions that you really uh, were a standout to. That helps us as well know how we can improve. And, uh, and uh, that sort of thing. So please make sure that you fill out that evaluation. Uh, if you are a person who needs to get continuing credit for a PD, you need certificate hours, the, uh, the attendance event can be 12 hours, and you can go, if you need to have that uh, certification or an official certificate, you can go to edtechteam.com slash PD certificate and fill out the form there, and one will be sent to you for that particular attending this session. So I'll give you a second if you want to take a photo of that. You can uh, go visit that site a little bit later as well. You know, each state in each country has a little bit different uh, requirements for that, but we try to provide at least some documentation. Yes, you did attend, and then you uh, hopefully learned something that we all did. We also have grad credit available. So if you need graduate credit, you can check out that URL, so taketeam.com slash grad credit. And for, it's from uh, Adam State University out of Colorado, which should be issued credit for attending these events, so you can get one graduate credit. You do have to do an uh, extra assignment for that, which I think, for example, you have 12 hours, and I think the assignment is technically three hours, so for example, for 15 hours for, for one credit. Um, it's generally how that works. Um, and it's, uh, it's pretty basic. It's pretty, actually, pretty useful as well, because it's taking something that you didn't learn or that you know and applying it in the classroom and really writing about that and sharing that information. So if you want to get more information on that, you can do that there. So we're not going to have all the triggers. Instead, what we need to do is uh, we need to pick a winner. So any other last minute uh, forms for uh, the uh, grant or the little prize here, which is a Samsung Galaxy Tab 4. Ooh. Any last minute forms? Bring them on up. I'm going to do this really scientifically. We're going to randomly draw one out of the statue and put them in the either. Put all the pressure on her. So it's her. Her uh, responsibility to win, or if you don't, know, it goes in here. Hopefully, this activity gave you a chance to meet some new people and to uh, uh, learn some new things that were a little bit slim on some of the um, sponsors and on uh, uh, cool and that sort of thing. So, we were uh, double dipping on any of them, but that was totally fine. The point is for you to get to know some new people and to uh, do some sharing that sort of thing. So, I'm going to shuffle in here, I'm going to put my dad in the shuffle, and then I need to randomly pick one person from the staff. <laughs>
and to change it from nearing to extending. So I want to just give you a little bit of a little bit of inspiration about some, somebody that's very important to me is my grandma. That's her right there. That's me. It's like I did used to have hair uh, back in the back <laughs> day. And uh, she's a very special woman in my life, obviously. Um, I was born in a very, very small town. Sigourney Iowa. Yes, it's pronounced Sigourney. It's not Sigourney, so Sigourney Weaver mispronounces it. You have to emphasize the right syllable. And yes, it is a town, or there's only about 2,000 people in that town. Now, another very important part of my life is a little town called Franklin, Tasmania. Anybody been to Tasmania? Ted, all right. Anybody know Franklin? All right, very good. So, uh, Franklin, Tasmania is a little town. Uh, down and about in the middle of nowhere, but it's got about 472 people when I'm in town. Um, uh, but it's a, it's a really important part of my life that kind of helps shape who I am. I think that we take pieces of where we are from and where we've been everywhere with us and that helps to shape who we are as a person. Those of you that are in the international circuit, you know that. You've experienced that as you've gone around to different, different parts. It becomes really hard to answer the question, well, where are you from? Are right? you from all of those places? And you take little bits of that. And as an international teacher, we do that as well. Especially when we get the opportunity to work with kids that have come from all these different areas as well. But having that sense of identity and knowing who you are is really, is really important. Um, and it's one of the things that has helped to shape my life. Now, the town of Sydney, Iowa, has the very famous river, the fountain. And that's the fountain right there. There's a big ruckus over whether or not we should renovate the fountain and all this sort of thing. Um, and it's, it's really a, a slow pace now. Everybody knows everybody. When I was growing up, you, you'd get in trouble if you didn't wave to somebody as they drove by. Or give them what I used to call a farmer finger. And as you're driving along, you say, you're driving like that, you just gotta raise your finger to wave to somebody as they go by. If you didn't do that, your parents would hear about it by the time, by the time you got home, which is kind of a, a, just the way that small towns work. Well, Franklin is also a very small town. And we'll, we'll try to, I'm not sure if we'll be able to get the audio on this, but we're going to really do a little mic that you can see if it works. Um, but the, one of the things that put Franklin on the map was a commercial, a TV commercial that was aired uh, not too long ago about James Bogues. Do you that name sound familiar to me? Bogues Beer, right? So here's a little video about that. It kind of got a little laggy there. I see a bunch of guys the lightsaber. It reminds me of that meme going around with the guy with the lightsaber uh, a little earlier. Um, but uh, the point, uh, one of the points there, put the uh, kind of uh, Tasmania or uh, Franklin on the map, where that horse and carriage kind of pulled up to the, the little pub, that's in, our, in, in Franklin. And the, the boat building school where the dock, where they throw the boat in and it comes out, or they, they throw it in and it comes out of the boat, that one, that as well. And it kind of lagged, it didn't quite get it. But there was a man and a woman sitting on the dock. And she pushes her boyfriend into the water because she wanted to grab that basically and he comes out. So we are definitely shaped by those things that we that we experience and those things that we um, to have, have with us in our life. Now my grandma, this is uh, that's my grandma on the left, that's my mom in the back in the top left. Typical family, good looking family back then. My grandpa was um, uh, a very important part of our lives as well. He was in World War II, uh, he was in prison of the camp, he was a kid that was in World War II. Right towards the end of it, he was on the death marches at the end, they were basically bringing everybody, trying to get everybody back. So many, many years ago, we found that there was somebody that wrote a book called Mark Gordon, and it was about life in that prison camp, and what it, what it was like, and it really meant something special to us. Um, it was something that my grandfather passed away when I was about uh, 14, um, and we had this book, but suddenly it kind of went missing, we couldn't find it. Now, this was, uh, I think, where, actually, it was when I was living in Taipei, as a matter of fact. I was in Taipei, and we needed to find 
times, we need to figure out what, what it is and how we, how we can get a hold of it again. And my grandma didn't remember much about it other than the guy's name. And you can kind of see there in the slide it says by Charles Janis, J-A-N-I-S. And she knew he was from New Jersey, and that's all she really knew. So this is back in the day, and the internet was there. Uh, we could email and sort of that sort of thing. And I was able to do some little research and find out all of the Janus and people of that name in New Jersey at that time. But of course, I couldn't email all of them. I didn't have a director of emails at the time. Uh, so instead, I, I sent a, a, a letter to each one of my email address. I said, if you, find, if, if you know anything about this, please, please get back to me. And sure enough, somebody did. This guy wrote back a while later. I thought it was one completely gone by then. Um, there's no chance, but he wrote back and he said, yeah, my mom gave me a letter, so I actually did write it on my own writing address, which is pretty amazing, and we were able to find it. The, the book itself, I only got one star, one of this for a review, um, now, but uh, there, it's a souvenir book, as it says right there, about a new style of court. So you could find it, at least we could for a little while, by Amazon, um, and that was, uh, it was really special for us to get that back and for us to get that, that back as part of our lives. So it's also a good study here in 1965 and offers the learning to get it. Now, I, I did get a very special opportunity a couple years ago. So, my, my grandfather, I don't even know how old he be right now, uh, but he'd be in his 80s probably, and probably early 90s, he's been living with my grandmother. And there was one gentleman that was still left, um, there we go, one gentleman who's still around. He, this is Frank, and he lives in. in uh, Montana. And so one last year, a couple years ago, I was going and doing a third team in, uh, in Wyoming, in Cody, Wyoming, which is right in the Northern Park. So I was able to take some time early. I went out there and I met my mom and we went, went and we talked to talked to, um, to Frank and he told us lots of stories about, about what it was like. And that was really meant a lot to me. So my grandma had all these really powerful events. She was a very, very strong woman. And it's made her really shape her who she is. And she kind of has left me to kind of summarize that to kind of four general things that I think really apply to us as well. Her first thing is to know what's trending. Yes, anybody have any, any, uh, any of this book, type of photo? Have you guys have seen that type of photo before? You might remember, I think you heard something history. Glamour shots. This, this was in the US, I know, it was in pretty much every shopping mall around. And there you go, you can go and you can dress up and you can have your photo taken. Uh, and you can look to, to uh, make you look all look, look the best you can possibly look. Of course, my grandmother did not ever wear a faux fur or those types of earrings or anything like that. But she knew that was the thing people were doing, so she was willing to, willing to try that out. Of course, if you actually take a look on YouTube or on uh, Google Images, these are the types of information you might get. Uh, the types of pictures you get back when you search for glamour shots. So, there's some pretty cool ones there. And if, if once in a time you want to waste a few minutes of your life, go ahead and look that up. So, as that relates to today, you guys might know, have heard of this little game that's going on. Now, this is if we don't have to watch this whole video. But, what is this about? Does anyone recognize some of these things out here from the industry? I think I heard it there. Pokemon. Pokemon Go. So you guys are teaching us, I want to talk about, so I talked about the, the um, uh, Pokemon a little bit earlier, but Pokemon is really all about, I think it's a big ploy for the uh, gaming industry to get people to try and make the, uh, the argument that, that video games make us dumb and make us uh, unhealthy and all this. They got it, and it was true. They actually did get people out and about and moving in ways that they never did before, all because of the silly game. Now, you as teachers, you don't have to know it all. You don't have to understand how Pokemon works or anything like that. And the same thing goes with, it, with all the technology. You don't have to know how, you don't have to know it all. But, and you, you can't possibly know it all for, for, for uh, starters. But what you do need to know are what are the possibilities and what are the limitations. What could we do with this? And you don't have to know how to do it, but what could we do with it? That's the possibilities. That's the what ifs. The yes they have that you might ask yourself when you're looking at a particular piece of technology. <sighs> the next thing that I got away from grandma was about that you need to learn from someone. Yeah. You need to learn from someone and you need to share with someone else. This is a, me taking a, a taking her through her iPad, making sure she had all her settings and these things that was sticky on there. But my grandma was actually a great model of this. Some of, you, some of you might remember this little graphic. Everybody's <laughs> growing, I think, how many hours do you sit through that? Right. My grandma, she's awesome. She, she is a techie grandma, actually. So she'll give, she'll, uh, she, I would go home one day, one year I went home, and she said to me, you know, well, Bill and Betty 
are, they just get on the point. What do you mean? What, what, what are they asking you for? Whatever. And she's like, well, they call me and they want me to go up and they want me to defrag their computer. And if they want me to do that, well, they've got another thing coming. <laughs> she was not about, she was a little huffy about the, that, um, about that, but she was a little bit frustrated. But she also was uh, willing, she did end up actually going and helping them because she also knew that they needed somebody to help with what it is that they were looking for. Okay? So nobody does learn without a teacher. And I was giving Tom a little bit of a hard time because he did these similar images earlier. And instead of searching for classroom, I searched for teacher. And this is what I got. You know, it's pretty much all female, uh, not a lot of diversity, there's a little bit of diversity. I really didn't the chalkboard still. I don't know how many people still have chalkboards, right? Um, and I, I did, when you do a, a, another little search here at the top, I love the little categories of things, right? Oh, it's clip art. Teachers love clip art, apparently. Right? And teachers are quite often angry. So <laughs> for some reason, those are the things that come up in this, uh, in this area. And so nobody learned without a teacher. The thing is that those are the teachers that we have that we've had in the past. Well, now we have these types of teachers. These are the ones that people are relying on to learn stuff, especially things like the YouTube. Right? That's where people go to find out what it is that they need to know anymore. So, Grandma was uh, very much uh, into that. She was very much knew that somebody needed to have a teacher somewhere. And the other thing that she also really gave us uh, a lot of uh, inspiration about was just this concept of giving it a go, give it a try. And I said it in my workshop just to see what happens, push the button and see what happens. That's what kids do. They don't sell. They ask, I'm going to break this. What, what's going to happen if I push this button? We have to lose that fear. You're probably not going to, because you're not going to break it and damage it permanently, unless maybe like drop it off of a, you know, off of a three-story building or something like that. But when you give it a go, you have to remember that 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 was easy is a phrase that I never let any of my people in my uh, tech department ever talk or say to any teacher. If you ever say that to a teacher, they're going to they're going to immediately shut down. Right, so, oh yeah, that's easy, let me just show you that this thing, I, I can do it. Because teachers have a very strong, very accurate whiff test. I think you smell it like this isn't right, this doesn't smell right, I don't, I don't think this is, this is true. Because everything is hard before it's easy. Right? If you think of the things that you know how to do, then you have to think back to when you first started them. So there's a whole meaning out there. If you say, this is the, the thing that I want to be able to do in the end, I'll have this rainbow stack of pancakes all per perfect with the syrup pouring down the sides in a nice cascading fashion, and the first time you do it, it ends up like that, right? <laughs> if you search, uh, search, uh, uh, do a search on a, a nailed it, does the nailed it mean? There's some really, really funny ones out there. But what if we, we gave that to kids? What if they had that nailed it philosophy, and they give it a go, and they try? First time you're not going to nail it, that's okay. And kind of the last thing that uh, my grandma always really espoused was have fun with it. These are my seven nieces and nephews from one of my siblings. Um, the five girls in the row are uh, two boys. Um, so they're a crazy bunch of kids, and they uh, definitely have fun with it. And grandma's always willing to jump in with that. So as we go and do this teacher, like, what can we take care, take from here, and apply it? These are kind of the four things that, that I've uh, kind of surmised from, from my own family, my own personal back upbringing, about those things that really make a difference and help for, uh, shape the way I am today and the way that I like to work and uh, uh, work with teachers and help them to espouse those same types of values. So know what's trending, learn from someone and teach someone, and make sure that you get it to go. And with that, we would like to close our Tech Team Southern Taiwan Summit for 2017. So thank you guys all for coming. And a big round of applause to yourselves and to Victor and the whole team.
and clearly you're not just teachers, you're learners, you're, you're very committed to what you're doing and uh, it's appreciated by, by absolutely everybody. Thank you, Jay, so much. We've, uh, we've finally, uh, <laughs> finally made, made this happen. It's the first uh, KS that I believe is the first thing as well, uh, but I hope it will, it will happen many times over. The list of people who have collaborated in the past couple of years to, uh, to bring this event together is long, but I just want to highlight a, a couple, and I'll start with the youngest, and that's the tech crew. There's a few back there, we can wave at them and say thank you. Thank you. And you know, I also, you know Robert, and you know Nina, and you know Tom from my office, they're, they're absolutely wonderful. Uh, the tech ambassadors as well, bring those old people in and give them a good amount. Thank you very much.